I'd like to discuss this case wherein after hydrodissection, the pupil shuts down. So in a scenario like this, what should be the way forward? Now one option could be the introduction of a pupillary expander. The other would be to proceed with phacoemulsification with this resultant small pupil, which is what we actually did. Let's now understand the principles of nucleus management of such a case, that is, a case of performing phacoemulsification in a small pupil. Let's move to watching the surgery. To start with, this was a patient with a non-dilating 4 to 5 mm pupil. A stretched pupiloplasty was performed which resulted in a slight dilatation of the pupil. However, following hydrodissection, the pupil came down to what you can see, this size that is roughly 3 to 4 mm. Let's now watch the surgery and try and understand the principles of nucleus management in a patient with a small pupil. Whilst attempting the nucleus management in a pupil this small, the only technique that's likely to work is the technique of a direct chop. It's important to have an adequate exposure of the tip to be able to impale the nucleus adequately. However, you don't want it to be overexposed either because remember, in a patient with a small pupil phaco, you are going to be emulsifying the fragments in the anterior chamber. To expose the tip, can result in the irrigation ports of the sleeve getting caught in the incision or coming out of the wound resulting in an unwanted surge. So therefore, it's important to plan how much you want to expose the tip. Let's now get to the nucleus management. With the irrigation on and the bevel facing downwards, the phaco probe is now introduced into the eye, after which the tip is rotated so that the bevel faces anteriorly. Note the second instrument, you always need to have a sharp chopper to be able to perform a direct chop. The sharp chopper is introduced into the eye through the paracentesis incision and is held in a downward facing position, ready to perform the mechanical disassembly once the probe is impaled. The FACO settings used in this case for performing the direct chop were as follows. A power of 25% was adequate because this is not a very hard cataract. A vacuum of 350 to 400 millimeters of mercury, which is required to perform the direct chop. And a flow rate kept not too high, something like 27 to 30 cc per minute. Because you're working in a slightly compromised condition of a small pupil and you want things to happen in a slow controlled fashion. With the chopper held in the non-dominant hand holding the eye stable, the phaco probe now impales into the central part of the nucleus. What's different in a small pupil is that you need to go slightly more vertically downwards and perhaps slightly start more proximally to be able to adequately get to the correct depth and thereby be able to successfully chop the nucleus. With the first chop being successful, we now have adequate visibility into the depth of the nucleus that allows for ease of breaking down the rest of the nucleus into smaller emulsifiable fragments. Watch how the entire nucleus disassembly takes place within the central visible part of the nucleus itself. Performing a viscofluid exchange intermittently is a great idea because Intermittently putting some viscoelastic into the anterior chamber enhances the protection of the corneal endothelium. Now that the nucleus disassembly is complete, we no longer need a chopper. So as you can see now, the second instrument is replaced with a Sinsky hook. This makes nucleus emulsification a lot safer because you don't accidentally end up damaging the posterior capsule with the sharp edge of the chopper during the fragment emulsification. Let's now move to the emulsification of the individual fragments. Each fragment that has to be emulsified is rotated so as to bring the fragments to lie in such a position directly opposite the tip prior to the emulsification. After which, each fragment is then impaled by the phaco tip, drawn out into the pupillary plane, often partially into the anterior chamber, and if large, further downsized and emulsified. This is what you will see in this part of the video. Note how each fragment is drawn right into the center and the phaco probe held steady in the center and the fragment downsized and emulsified. At no point is the phaco tip 
close to the pupil. This is a very important consideration which helps you prevent any accidental damage either to the pupillary edge or the anterior capsular edge which is hidden under the pupillary margin. Phaco emulsification in a small pupil should be done slowly with care and caution at all times having complete control on the step that you are performing. I do hope you found these few tips on the safe emulsification of the nucleus in a patient with a small pupil useful. Thank you.